Leading up to my practicum placement at the Island School, everyone kept telling me, all you're going to be doing is surfing, laying in the sun, and scuba diving. Let's just say they kind of got it right. You want me to try to catch sharks with a small net that has holes in it? Vacation over. Alright, let's back up for a second and see how this all got started. The Island School was created and founded by Chris Maxey, a former graduate of Miami U. He gathered a few students for the inaugural Marine Ecology Internship. Fast forward 13 years later and the school has transformed not only into a semester to high school, Deep Creek Middle School, and also the Cape Eleuthera Research Institute. You can't call this a school though. This is a community. It's more than just that. It's a lifestyle. First off, let's talk power. The Island School currently has a 10 megawatt wind turbine, with plans in the future to build one three times larger. In addition, the school uses solar energy including the largest solar panel in the Bahamas. This accounts for 60% of the school's total power. Fuel. The school has its very own biofuel plant, which collects its oil from nearby cruise ships, as well as local restaurants. The plant produces enough fuel to power all the vehicles on campus, and even has plans to power most of the boats in the coming years. Under construction is a methane plant. This will one day power the needs of the biofuel plant. They don't just recycle, they reuse. Take this old glass, pair it with some old conch shells, and you got a building. Not just any building, but a big one. All the wood you see is non-native species. They build wet labs, research centers, and dormitories. All out of the materials they find all over campus. This entire building was made from an old wharf that they were going to blow up. Food. Nothing on campus is planted without a reason, whether it be used for medicine, food, or permaculture. This is all done without the help of any pesticides or fertilizers. They even grow fish, cobia to be exact. This species grows relatively fast and is easily farmed. When they get too big for their tanks, they get sent to the cage. an enormous fish habitat at the bottom of the ocean. And what happens to all that fish waste? You grow lettuce. Lots of lettuce. The mature fish are then given freely to the community. And for any food not consumed, there's a process. Whether it be composting or feeding it to the pigs. A couple times a semester, the students are invited to partake in harvesting a pig. The school only drinks sustainable water. Um, these are the cisterns. They are our water supply on campus. We have five throughout the campus. So every morning, Kyle and I come to all the locations and we open up each cistern and measure the water level from the north east corner. corner. We look at it and say we round down so it's 108. 108. A cistern collects all the rainfall from gutters located on most routes. One unit of the island school math is based on cistern calculations. 
10 second showers are a staple on campus. But when water supplies are too low, it's ocean shower only. Time do we have? Shit. Oh. Oh. Fuck. No. no. 5.47. It's 5.47, we're heading to school. Can you? We're down a headlight. <laughs> Six days of the week, the students are either training for a half marathon or four mile swim. The students also train for what is called a run swim, a two mile course mixed with a wall climb, running, swimming, and even cliff jumping. After the one hour workouts, all the students return to their dorms and get ready for 45 minutes of chores before even breakfast begins. This is the daily life of being a student at the Island School. For their human ecology class, the students learned the impacts of overfishing. And this is how they did it. The sea is the most beautiful place in the world. I've uh, been fishing ever since he was a little boy. Um, and uh, his story is pretty fascinating. Right here where we are today, along the shore here, in those days in the 70s, early 70s, you could have been tied down low, you could walk in your shoes, took a thousand skunks. Fishing vessels just come to Nassau, come here, just get on. Shallow water, take back to Nassau. There were bigger demands for conks. And eventually, with big boats, someone fished the place up, destroyed the conk. The same loves you, the project, he loves you. Look how big that is! Oh, 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 oh. Oh. level research project. There are several ongoing research projects including invasion of lionfish, sea turtles, conch, bonefish, mangroves, deep water sharks, and lemon sharks. To catch lemon sharks, first you need nets. A lot of nets. Secondly, you need a van, the war horse, that can go through anything. After setting your nets, you wait till the tide goes down. You get a lot of bycatch, turtles, bonefish, other types of sharks that you don't want. But then you find the lemons. Lemon sharks are then measured, weighed, tagged, and checked for overall health. 
then they release them back through the wild. You also need to find out what prey is on these lemon sharks, and that means big sharks. Yes, big sharks. Reef sharks, tiger sharks, bull sharks, even adult lemon sharks. It's a little bit more complicated catching big sharks. Deep Creek Middle School was invited to watch this shark dissection. They determined the cause of death and what it was eating. The Deep Water Project used a submersible sub called the Medusa. It captures images from the bottom of the ocean. On this launch, we dropped the Medusa about 700 meters. In order to retrieve the Medusa, a transmission is sent through a modem. The Medusa then drops its weight and returns to the surface. There are only five of these machines in the world, one of which, off the coast of Australia, is stuck 1,300 meters down on the ocean floor. All community outreach projects are designed by middle school students. They then team up with students from the island school to pool resources in hopes of enhancing the neighboring bohemian community. Projects include high Asian bohemian relations, cleaning up community waste, preventing teen substance abuse, and many others. This four-month research project was trying to prevent the invasion of lionfish. The project hopes to educate local fishermen and restaurants to not only alleviate pressure on other species, but to stop an invasive species that is thriving in bohemian waters. In order to educate local fishermen and restaurant owners, they first need to learn themselves how to properly handle and prepare lionfish to be eaten. Your finger in there and make sure that it's clear. <laughs> Oh, and this whole segment was also being taped by a French film crew. We're doing a series on invasive species. The same crew who brought you Blue Planet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So, lionfish poses an excellent opportunity for a diner in a restaurant as it gives the diner a way to give back to the environment instead of taking away from it. So lionfish is a white flaky fish, it's delicious, um, and you can cook it in a variety of ways. So I'm going to do two ways today. So that's the island school, and I still have 1 minute and 12 seconds for P3. So here we go.